So I would say I have a couple different goals for outreach. Um, number one is so that communities we're working in can really get a sense of what we're, why we're out here, what we're interested in, to make archaeology a little more real for them maybe, or a little more personal, and not just something that they, they read about or see on TV. Big broadcast on the local library said, you know, they're going to be talking about the members' uh, pottery. and. Um, Living down in southern New Mexico for the last 20 years, I've had the uh, privilege of uh, running across a lot of it, you know, just lying around. It's always a big treat to see it. And so I was interested in what you guys had to say and what you're doing out there in this heat. A lot of people have um, a misconception of what archaeology is. Like, um, I know in my archaeology class, the first thing he says, he's like, it's not Indiana Jones and it's not Jurassic Park. So, I don't know. It opens their eyes to what um, we do and, you know, the cool things of the past. I mean, for like the little kids like Dennis, you know, you could see how excited he was when he found that rock in the sandbox. And, you know, he just, I think it's really important. But it's more of an inclusive rather than exclusive process. You're not shuffling around from exhibit to ex exhibit in a dark room looking at things that you can't touch. You're touching things, you're feeling things, you're talking about them, you're, you know, you're doing experimentation with them. You're seeing what does work and what doesn't work and you're having a good time laughing. And that brings this whole sense of um, familiarity with the past. Because one of the things that has struck me so much about living here in the Southwest where there's ancient pot shards all over the place, mm -hmm. you can hold that in your hands and you can feel the, the thumbprint of a human being who was here a very long time ago. It's almost like you can touch their hand because you can put your hand where their hand obviously was. And there's something really special about things that are created with your hands. You know, there's always that bottom line. But um, when I was doing the yucca for the rope, um, you know, you twist it, you twist like five strands or more together and um, you know, it makes a really strong rope and a woman came up to me and was like, oh yeah, this is so crazy because, you know, you see electrical wires now that are, t not electrical wires, uh, big cords, steel cords that are tiny little um, steel cords put together and twisted just like that. And it, you know, it's kind of, it was kind of put things into perspective. I was kind of like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Everything that's important has a story, and archaeology and studying things from the past is finding stories, finding true stories about people. If we understand people's stories, we understand people, we understand each other ever so much better the more we understand about any culture, whether it's ancient or modern. What's neat about New Mexico, of course, is you have the living cultures are still here, so you can actually go see the living cultures and, and have, you know, I had a friend in college who was uh, uh, from Santo Domingo Pueblo, and he invited me to the dances. And so it was like, you get the sense of continuity that you, I don't think it's quite as vivid in other places. For the field school students to learn that we have a responsibility to talk to the public about we do, what we do, that if we want to continue to do the work that we do, that we want to, if we want to get funding, if we want to be supported by um, you know, taxpayers, that we have to, um, we have an obligation to do this kind of thing, that it can't just be sort of ivory tower set up in the, you know, in our universities and not talk about our results to, to other people. So I think those are the two main goals that I have.